Hello again. How are you all doing today? Well, I'm going to continue the series on working the body, keeping us a little bit more flexible, especially in this time when we tend to be a little sedentary because we're all slowed down in our lives a little bit. So I want to give you some other exercises to do. And I just wanted to tell you that when we stretch and we move like this, we're also helping our energy and our vibration um, quite a bit. As we get a little bit more sedentary and we sit in, we're kind of bringing that energy down. You start getting a little more depressed. You start feeling not as excited about things. You get in front of the TV or the movies and you're just going to be droning out. So to getting out and moving your body and moving all that, you're going to be able to lift your energy a little bit higher and the vibration will help, which is a good thing to do at this time. Um, that's just kind of where we're going. We're going in that direction, as you will learn as I continue to uh, show you ways of working with energy. So today, uh, I'm going to show you how to open up the hip flexors, and I'm going to show you through a couple different positions. So there's like different levels of doing this. You'll be starting out possibly at one level, and you'll work yourself up. And I'm going to concentrate very much on body alignment, because that's the most important thing you can do. With body alignment, you're going to be able to develop those muscles and open up those muscles and joints without having to be out of alignment to cause um, stress or to cause any kind of wear and tear on the joint. So with that, how we're going to start is you want to get on the floor, on a mat, on something comfortable, a carpet, even a towel, something that you can sit on the floor with if you can. If not, then you'll have to modify in ways you, you can do this, but if you can, please get on the floor. And then we're going to start by taking one leg and putting it, we're going to lean over to the side and stretch this, stretch this leg out um, in, a, in a line where the knee is down and the knee is in alignment with the toe in this position when it's open like this. The other leg is just going to set in here. Now we want to pull down as far as we can. It's not going to be a lot of range of motion because the leg is so far extended outward, um, like in an abduction direction. So you're not going to be able to stand those hips up real well. So you're going to, most of your weight is going to be on the sit bone on the, on the side that your leg is bent in front of you. Then you want to remember the square. The square is the shoulders and the hips making a square. And sometimes the square will turn, but that's not the square. The square is when you're in that alignment with the hips and the shoulders. So then the hands can, you can rest one hand down. So you're taking the weight out of this hip here and you're gonna just feel a lengthening here. And then you wanna pull that leg back as far as you can so that it's a straight line coming up through here. So this is the hip flexor muscle. It's a straight line down into the quadriceps. You're leaning into the arm here and be sure when you lean on your hand that you're not pushing the weight into the, into the wrist you want to push it into the fingers because if you push it too hard into the wrist, you're going to cause a little bit of wrist problems. So keep your hands pressed in with the fingertips so you're on the front part of the hand or the finger part of the hand. And then we're just going to sit here. The other hand can be in front and you're in this square, even though you're leaning to the side, you're still in the square. So your shoulders are forward and your hips are forward. And then what you're going to do here is find whatever is comfortable. Sometimes it's here, you're a little more twisted but it's, it's okay to put here or here for the hand, just wherever you can balance comfortably. Okay, and then what you wanna do next is you wanna take the hip and push it forward. Now there's not gonna be a lot of movement forward, but you'll feel a deeper stretch happening there. You'll also feel something going on on the opposite side, kind of in the, in the gluteal area. Then you're gonna pull your hip back. So you're pushing that hip back, so you're rotating in that hip, and then you're gonna push the, the hip forward again and you're gonna push it back. And you're gonna push it forward slowly and you're gonna push it back. And each time you do this, you're gonna feel a little more of an opening happen. So you can do that a few times until it gets real fluid feeling, real, real fluid. And then you wanna sit up, bring this leg in a little bit more and it'll come to the front while you're getting positioned. Now here, as your leg bends, at a 90 degree angle in the knee, you're gonna to wanna to be really careful about the alignment of the foot with that. So your foot is gonna to have to start to tuck underneath the tighter you get this leg in. So if you're gonna bring it in here, you're gonna to have to fold your foot so your foot is kind of 
more the top of the foot is on the floor, it's not going to be totally, but at least where the big toe is, because then you're going to maintain that, that stretch. And here again, you want to open that hip as wide as you can. We're going to leave it about 90 degrees for now. And then you're going to try to place the hips where you're feeling a little more of this other hip. The same hip that the leg is going back, you're going to feel the hip coming down onto the floor. And then here, you're going to take your hands just a little bit behind you. The fingers are going to hold you. And then you're going to push up in those hips. The same thing that we did, but you're going to feel a much deeper stretch going into that hip and you're gonna feel probably it going down into the quadricep as well. So this is gonna be a little uncomfortable at first. It does take time. You wanna take your time with it. So you just roll it up and down. It's an up roll and then back down. And you're just isolating that hip. Everything else should be relaxed. Just that little hip. A lot of times people have problems isolating different parts of their body. So that's another exercise to begin to think about while I'm teaching you these isolated movements. We're just really articulating the hip, but there is gonna be other movement happening in the body, but that's not where we're concentrating on. We're letting it just ride with this opening and closing of the hip. Okay, so you'll feel a nice deep stretch starting to happen. Okay, then when you get really flexible with this and you can get your sit bone both sit bones down the weight will be a little more on one sit bone but the other sit bone should be on the floor then you can tuck this leg in even tighter and when you tuck it in tighter you have to be sure that your foot is underneath you do not have the foot bent around like that because you take that you're rotating the knee a little and it's a hinge joint it doesn't rotate happily and you are going to wear and tear your knee so it's important to tuck yourself in there coming up and now here's where both sit bones are going to have to get to the floor so you're, you're high on this leg and you're tucking this in. And if you're not here yet, then just go back to one of the beginning levels and do one of those and continue to work because this takes a little bit more stretch in the quadricep as well. So now what you're gonna do is place your hands behind you and lean back a little bit. And then you're gonna push that up. Uh, again, it's just that hip isolation. Okay, so rolling up and back and up and back. Now, here's where the fun comes in. Once you do this a few times and you feel it open, then you want to take the hands and move them back a little further behind you so that you're leaning back into a little bit more of an angle in the back. Now, when you do this, you want, again, you want to have your hands mostly on the fingers, not pushing into the, into the, into the wrists and the palm of the hand. You want to have it on the fingers and then you're gonna push that hip up. You're gonna see it doesn't go as far, but you're gonna feel a much deeper stretch into the quadricep. So you wanna rotate that up and down, up and down, and go very slowly. You know, if you're doing this on your own and you're not following me once you get good at it, I would say do it three, four times very slowly, and be sure that you do the same thing on both sides. Now, if you're really good at this one, then you can take yourself and you can go down to your elbows. Now this is where you've got to be real careful of that knee placement, but you go down to the elbows. Okay, you're on the elbows, you're bracing yourself, and now you just do that hip up and down. This is a massive stretch for the quadricep, and it still is working the joint very deeply. Up and back, and up and back, and it doesn't move very far, but it's a massive stretch, you'll feel it for sure. You wanna keep your head, that feeling of the head of up and back with the neck, and you wanna feel a relaxation in the shoulders. You just wanna isolate that hip and feel that stretch in that leg. And then you can also push and just hold it for a little while, and while you hold it there, if it's real tight, begin to relax it while it's being stretched. Just think of relaxing it, you're gonna feel it kind of let go, and it's gonna let go kind of rebelliously because it's so used to holding tight. Okay, so now we can just lift back up, and then you wanna bring your leg out very carefully and cross it around and just shake it out a little bit by opening it up this way. Okay, that's a real good stretch, and you know, even though it doesn't look like much, it will increase your heart rate a little bit, and it makes me a little winded so, uh, you know, you, you get a bigger workout of this than it looks like. So now to go to the other side, we're going to start again with the legs stretched out long. 
the square happening and then just a little pushing up and back. So you can see that the foot can be sideways on the floor here and it's up and back. You'll probably find too that there's one leg that feels better than the other because we are not symmetrical. We have a strong side and a weak side and we have a kind of an obedient side and a rebellious side. So here we're just pushing this up and back and there's a little bit of movement here that's isolating this hip. Up and back, up and back. Okay, and then pull that in to about 90 degrees at the leg. Now the, the toe here is gonna have to come down on the mat so you're in alignment. That big toe aligned right up to the knee and then put the, the sit bones back down on the floor. And then you can have your hands here or behind. Sometimes it's kind of nice to sit up straight. Sometimes it's better to just lean back, just wherever you're comfortable. I'm gonna do it on this side with my hands forward. And so you just pull it up and you wanna maintain that square. That's the other thing that you wanna watch out. Whether you're laying back or being forward, you wanna keep this alignment of the square. So when I'm pushing up, I'm, I'm still in the square. My shoulders are rotating just a little to follow that hip and then back down. But it's still in, in a unity of movement. It's, it's moving with each other. It's not moving against each other. And that's the beauty of staying relaxed and just isolating where you are because the body will just follow the lines of movement that it has to. Okay, and then you can tuck that knee in even tighter and get both sit bones down. You know, I've done these for years and years and years and because I've paid attention to my knees, I have no knee issues at all. So um, I have never had any real knee issues. So it does matter to align that, um, that joint. And now we're gonna work here, of up and back, in a very tight position. Up and down, and just isolating that. Letting that square, maintain the square, with a little bit of movement where this shoulder is following just a little bit along with that. It's very small. And then you can push up and feel and hold it, if you can hold it here, and then feel as it relaxes, and you can do this through all of them, but hold it as it's relaxing and then you can push it just a little bit more. And when you push it a little bit more, you're pushing like from the back. You're pushing it forward from the back and then you're letting it back down. Okay. So there's that. And then you can go back to the hands, which we were, and then you can go back to the elbows. Make sure that your knee is in alignment and then you can push up and back here. Here's where I feel like I'm really tight. So it's, it's a big stretch. Those muscles don't get stretched very much when we're sedentary. They get kind of a positional. So just work it up and down and then push and hold it in the stretch and then just get the body aligned, let the head and neck relax, let the shoulders relax. Let everything relax and just feel that stretch and then focus on that stretch, feel the tension in there and then begin to feel it relaxing, just letting it go letting it go, letting it go. Okay, and then we can bring that hip back down and bring yourself back up. Bring the knee around and just kind of shake it out a little bit. And there we have it with uh, the hip opening. So that should feel really good. You should feel a lot of change going on there. It should feel good. You might be stiff the next day a little bit, but it's a good kind of stiffness, so just be with it. And I would say try to do a little bit of this every day. Just small amounts of things that I'm showing you can keep you in pretty good working order structurally, and you'll be in alignment and you're gonna be developing well. You're gonna feel different, you're gonna feel better, and it's overall just really good for your health. So thank you so much for viewing, and I'll have more for you later. Thank you for sharing, thank you for subscribing, Thank you for the thumbs up. And I think there's a little bell up there that you can hit that you'll get a notification every time we post. So if you want to, you can hit that too. But thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it.